hello and welcome back to my corner of the internet and i am so glad that you could join us here today as we dive into the lesser known aspects of trinidad and tobago history and if that is something you are interested in you better subscribe because that is what we do here now if you're already tuning in subscribe i just wanted to big up my subscribers for a minute because just the other day i was looking through my comments because i don't read them often and i was just so i was feeling so blessed to have such an encouraging and wonderful subscriber base because you all are so supportive of the channel you're so encouraging and also you know the one or two times that you guys have you know seen me out in public and you've come up and said hi i have really enjoyed it so if you do see me out and about which isn't very often um you know feel free to say hello and of course you know if you hear noise in the background i do live by a main road and it is daytime so people are out and about but let us get into today's video because it is crazy and if you see me looking down now and then it's because i'm reading from my laptop um i do write down the information so that i don't forget or like i don't say the wrong thing so let's get into that so I know what you're thinking from the title of the video. You're like, what? What state of emergency for Christmas? What the heck is this girl talking about? Well, have no fear because the state of emergency, the lockdown I'm talking about happened over 200 years ago. And it was a regular practice. And I had no idea. And I was like, why has nobody ever talked about this? This is crazy. Now, this, st this story is going to take us on a wild ride we are going to experience we are going to learn about secret african societies we are going to be learning about the lockdown we are going to be learning about shootouts in the streets between the white people we are going to be learning about gift exchanges we are going to be learning about um enslaved people doing white face and white people doing black face for christmas and yeah so buckle up for this wild ride so let's get a little backstory as to why we were on lockdown every single christmas in the 1700s the late 1700s and 18 early 1800s now the context behind that was there were especially in the early 1800s late 1700s there were a lot of slave revolts happening throughout the caribbean and there was recently you know in that time the haitian revolution the haitian revolts and we know how violent and bloody that was and they gained their freedom from that now the english within trinidad and tobago of course heard that news and they were like none of that's happening here so they were paying a lot of attention to their african um enslaved persons and communities keeping their ears open to hear if there were any revolts being planned. Now, there was one such revolt being planned for Christmas 1805. And unfortunately, the English people, the white people, they learned of it. They heard the little whispers. Now, there were several mini revolts happening around that time. And in order to discourage it, the English people decided they were going to make examples out of these revolters so they would violently put an end to the revolts you know shooting and killing any enslaved persons or african persons involved in the revolt and it, like i said to make an example out of them they executed them publicly so that they would not encourage other revolts but this revolt the christmas revolt for 1805 was organized by an african and they just described him as an african now i don't know if he was an enslaved person if he was a freed person but they just described him as an african man who looked to be of Igbo descent and he was his name was king samson that was his name and he was he had the reputation of being a great opium man now this is where we touch on the secret societies right the secret african societies. so apparently um in late 1700s 1800s there were african societies with groups 
that um, called themselves regiments and they were located in the um, let me just get the proper areas right the Maraval area Diego Martin St. Anne's and Caronage area and they would have ranks of king queens marshals within their groups for um, I guess management purposes and the leaders of the groups and their names these were the, the, the large groups that we knew about they were called Kokorit, the Macaque, St. George, Danish, Guadeloupe, La Fantasy and the Dreadnought. I don't know how they picked their names I guess they had their reasons but funnily, funnily enough slave revolts and the general merriment of Christmas between enslaved persons wasn't the only reason we were on lockdown. Sorry for the noise again, main road problems. The other reason, which was so wild to me, was that with the drinking and the merriment of Christmas, the white people and the French Creoles were getting rowdy at Christmas time. And with drinking, came violence and fights and not just any fights but dueling yeah where they have shootouts and whoever survived wins they were that was going on and it was so pervasive that the governor of trinidad had to put martial law into place at christmas time to quell the dueling it was such a problem because in the 1700s 1800s trinidad and tobago was like the wild wild west there were everybody had a gun you know people riding horses carts and buggies and if you piss off somebody they were ready to shoot you on sight and that's how it was so now in 1813 saw the woodford administration coming in he was the governor of trinidad and tobago sir ralph woodford yes woodford scale woodford square woodford he hated anything out of order so the merriment the drinking the dueling the revolts the party and the wine and the jam and the singing he hated all of it and he was ready to put a stop to it all so he particularly loved having a lockdown at christmas and unlike his predecessors he was known like i mentioned in another video he was known for not liking the co-mingling and the intermingling of the races and he unlike his predecessors did not have um an african mistress in trinidad he did not leave what they call a colored family behind when he died um because he was not on that he was very well racist and he didn't want the mingling of races so he wanted to put a stop to that as well because he he found he found that his white counterparts and French Creole counterparts were creating too many freed colored persons through their relationships. So he wanted to put a stop to that and one of his favorite ways was lockdown for Christmas. In 1820, the, the martial law, the lockdown was supposed to end on the 2nd of January, 1821 but in that year it actually went until the 8th of january because he just wanted to give you a little extra lockdown he just wanted to control you a little more because he was like mm, the eighth might still have too much merriment no no the second will have too much merriment let me drag it out until the eighth i have these sources in my description always so i took this from the angostura history of trinidad and tobago digest and there is actually an account, a written account from the diary of um, a slave owner's wife. Her name was Mrs. Carmichael. And she wrote about the Christmas on the plantation. So let's see what she had to say. Christmas on the plantation depends, oh, and I'm reading from my laptop, depends on the nature of your administrator's relationship with their enslaved peoples. So in one case, she and her husband and their slaves came over from St. Vincent to Trinidad. And so she, um, in 1830, wrote this in her diary. She, said, she described 
that the plantation house was given over to the slaves so that food may be prepared. Later, she visited the dance where the slaves paid great attention to proper dress and decorum. She was happy to report that there was no drinking or fighting. Music was provided by the female singers accompanied by drums and the women playing shak shaks. The dance was given by the slaves to welcome the new slaves who had been freshly acquired by the estate. There was so much singing and composition from the slaves, speeches and good wishes for good sugarcane crops. At Christmas, allowances and prizes were handed out to slaves on the estate. It was a very merry scene, as she described it. Slaves covered their faces with flour and put flour in their hair, calling out, look at he white face and he white wig. This form of role reversal was echoed when the white people dressed as black gardeners Black, blackening their face in the carnival mask called Neg Jardin. And a historian, his name is Lionel M. Frazier, remarked, however, that there was a substantial difference. There was no personal freedom, of course, for these enslaved persons, and so they had to make the best of life at the time. So her account is definitely, you know, what she would have envisioned it to look like. I'm sure they probably weren't that happy, but you never know I wasn't there. Now, he said that there was a popular song in Trinidad at the time, and it goes like this. The bread we eat is the white man's flesh. The wine we drink is the white man's blood. He, Saint Domingo, rem remember Saint Domingo. So I think from the song, the cannibalistic song, we could, we could, we could gather that they weren't that happy with their circumstances. But I could only hope, we could only hope that at some point they did have a good Christmas. And that brings us to the end of this video. This was a wild ride. I, I, was, I was like, what am I reading? We have secret societies, we have revolts, we have dueling in the streets, we have white face, black face, we have songs about cannibalism. Our history is so interesting. It is amazing to me that I have never heard this story before. But let me know in the comments how you liked today's video and if you knew any of this and what you thought about it. And look forward to the rest of the content coming out this month. And until next time, bye!